and it is Easter. It's the 31st, a Sunday. Uh, no one really celebrates Easter anymore, so we're kind of just going Do with the Do you celebrate flow. it? Is that is that the word? <sighs> well, they don't really call it a holiday anymore. That's fair. You don't really have any days off for it, so... We uh, the days of the pastel, we would bring uh, our, our guy from Death of Color here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good intro. Yeah, I like you. that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm an Easter egg. <laughs> so... So let's talk about how our weeks went. Uh, Justin, how was your week? I had a good week. We were in uh, Bolivar and at Favor last week. We taught a, taught a class. Um, we had a bunch of young men show up that uh, we got put into a program at a local body shop. They're going to start doing some work with us. So good. that was really good. Um, I had a pretty boring week, which was actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I was, it was good. That's good. Yeah. You seem very disheveled right now. Are you I'm all right? Very disheveled. Take, a, take, take a deep breath. I know. All right, our week was pretty good at the gym. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Justice Works. Um, they work with d different uh, types of youth. I got to go in and I made them buffalo chicken, the healthy version of buffalo chicken. Good. So we had wraps and I showed them kind of how to create a meal on a budget and something that you can make ahead of time. And we talked about nutrition and it was nice instead of them coming to the gym to work out to go into their space mm -hmm. where they have their classroom setting and just talk about food and get to actually just talk to them. Because typically I make them work out so we don't get to have that conversation time. So it was really cool to talk about nutrition and hopefully teach them a few things when they're, you know, shopping on a budget and creating meals ahead of time. So. I guess high schools don't do that stuff anymore. They don't teach kids how to... They don't do home. Oh, they don't even feed them properly, so yeah, probably that's, that's not. Fair. Yeah, we that's have fair. an insanely broken food pyramid that yes. like, we found out was totally wrong. It's <laughs> even worse now. Yeah. Well, yeah. We had an experience where the meal was like a peanut butter and jelly uncrustable um, grapes, like this big of a mm -hmm. cup of grapes, and those little goldfish crackers. Um that was the healthy option. My, I went with the unhealthy option, which was a bowl of mac and cheese, one single breadstick, and marinara sauce. That was what purchased. The sauce was the vegetable. I'm not sure if you knew yeah. that or not, but it's yeah. a vegetable. Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over -pro processed. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. No, I, I was just always about mashed potatoes in high school. Whenever I had ma mashed potato day, I just got a bowl of that. And then you so, can just put chicken. That's my or desert whatever island in there. food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. All right, so let's do a little introduction, Derek. Um, tell us about who you are, what you do. I am Derek Robert Smith from Purchase Line. I went to high school with Trista and Justin. Uh, moved away uh, f from the city after high school, and uh, or to the city after high school, uh, and started finding myself in the city. So a country boy learning the city ways. So at this point, I'm best of both worlds, and I started uh, refining my my art and uh, finding my path, being completely on my own, uh, pretty much late 17, uh, and just figuring out the world and uh, being the best person I can be solo and uh, touching as many people's lives as I can with, with art. And um, yeah, just overall hopeless romantic. Good, I like it, I so, like it. And just like doing my best and being, uh, having a unique life. So, and you grew up yeah. uh, here. So, what what was your childhood childhood like? I was born in a trailer in New York. So, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, but uh, so, and at two years old, my mom left, and my my dad moved down into the Purchase Line area. Uh, we lived just a uh, like Commodore area, um, and so my dad just had no outs. So we we moved in with my grandma, and then we moved into a trailer in the country. And uh, so it, it was always just a struggle from day one. Um, my dad was a very broken person that never uh, figured himself out. And he, through his, you know, generation, there was no therapy. There was no, mm -hmm. you know. It was all survival. Yeah. yeah. And so he's definitely, you know, that, that I reflect on of my adult brain. He was very depressed, a broken person, insecure, foolish. He had foolish pride, uh, abusive. Uh, he did nothing healthy for himself, so uh, he, he had no dreams, no motivation. Because you know, I, when his wife leaves and you, you're stuck with two kids, that's pretty overwhelming, I bet. And then <laughs> yeah. you have no money, and you're frustrated, and you're tired. And uh, so we just grew up, you know, pretty. We had to grow up pretty quick. There was no fun childhood, you know, uh, no Christmases for a while and stuff. Uh, bad, bad diet, bad. It's just everything, you know, but, um, so my childhood, 
at home was pretty dark, but like, uh, my dad was still a good moral guy. Like he, he, everybody loved him at the bars cause he, he put up the walls and he's, he's always happy. Uh, he never showed it only uh, us kids saw the, the bad part of it. Um, he's always unemployed. We're always, always on food stamps. Uh, it, meanwhile, I was a kid that had, I cleaned the house, I cooked the food, like I, I could use the oven before five years old. I did my laundry before five years old because uh, there's no, he was lazy as hell too uh, yeah. on top of that. So he'd even do like parental things. So it's like housekeeping and stuff. So we grew up pretty dirty too because I was only a kid. And uh, so I'd, as I grew older and I saw people's nicer homes, like I figured out how we were living. So I had to pick up the pieces there. And he, overall just became dependent on me. My sister left, like she couldn't take any more of their fighting. Uh, she went through a whole litany of things, but uh, it was just me and my dad for, for a while there. And I was pretty much his butler and emotional support and stuff. Uh, and then at 18, uh, he had this kind of crazy rule. He had like these old timey like rules that made no sense. Like, um, so after the army and I moved away at 18, he just, you're on your own kind mm -hmm. of thing so that probably left me with like severe abandonment issues oh i'm sure it did <laughs> uh, besides like the mother leaving and stuff and like c coming back sometimes and leaving and stuff like that but uh so she did go back and forth sometimes. yeah she, she'd pump fake me that she's coming back and leave again and stuff <sighs> um but she's like yeah. lucy from charlie brown pulling a full yeah movie. like actually yeah. moved back in or came yeah in for, for like a, a summer and like uh, yeah and th then she realized oh yeah my dad sucks and <laughs> 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 like I, I was a kid that just never uh i didn't do the stereotypical like hitting the wall and mad at my mom stuff and like blamed her for everything because i don't know what's in my head to not do that stereotypical acting out stuff or whatever uh i never I just was I'm very blunt like down to earth as far as how, how I assess situations so there's no emotional things I was like making my uh building my life off of like with, with divorce and stuff because I just looked at him like just yeah like overweight has a limp kind of dumb like uh like ignorant and uh did you just describe me <laughs> <laughs> you're like th there's nothing that would attract a woman to stay Mm -hmm. so no shit you so know? you put the blame on your dad yeah well i just like yeah go get yours meg like that sucks you're in a trailer with a guy that's like is obviously going to be here forever you have kids that you didn't plan on um i never like don't stick you don't have to waste it on me like, yeah uh, we made it just fine uh yeah of course there's times in my life where i i see mothers and sons and daughters like being at their best and I wanted that yeah but at the same time what she had would have suffered through to be just to be around what would have been probably worse for us because she would have took it out on me and my sister she probably would have you know over time get poisoned yeah it, you know it to being really really shitty so um yes yeah, so be it so I just had to grow up quick that was my childhood and uh with little dabs of like hope of and that's where the art comes in because I knew I had something if I only pursued it, like you read about, you know what I mean? So as bad as things got, I'm like, I, I think I have a way out. It took me a while to get it, but uh, yeah, there's always hope in my eyes. You know? um, did your, did, did you, have you talked to your mom since or when she left no. the final time you just haven't? No, I, uh, I just let people be like, you know, cause the damage is already done. When, when they do the things like it's too late now, everything has happened. Yeah. There's no getting you back. And I know I have the power in any relationship I ever lost to get them back. But I ha I'm the one that has to sleep at night knowing I had to do all the work. Yeah. And I wouldn't believe that you loved me the entire time anyway. Because yeah. you didn't knock on my door. I did to, to fix things. And I, I can't get over that. You know, and I, what I learned all these years, like, you, you, have, you have to meet me halfway. Every relationship. Halfway. Mm -hmm. uh, and for a very, very long time up until... Only a couple of years ago, I was going way beyond halfway for people. So, and that's about the abandonment wound that you talk about. Um, abandonment issues are, are so real, and for so many different different family issues, friendship issues, and they show up over and over and over again in your life mm -hmm. if you don't learn to like heal them. And they affect your romantic relationships. They affect they affect all kinds of relationships. And it's I found it interesting that you you um keyed in on that because a lot of people have no idea what that is they're like yeah. oh I well like i said there's a wiring in my brain where 
like the, the way I, I I got around was watching my my dad was a living um, warning device. Like, don't do that <laughs> because he just screwed up all the time. Yeah. So where like you might just imitate your parent or just do what they're doing i kind of looked at him and watched the people he interacted with and i just picked their body language up and like they're annoyed they don't like him or they think he's dumb or he doesn't always talk about it. he would embarrass himself and all that kind of stuff so i'm like oh that sucks don't do that yeah <laughs> and i went through my life like i made it all this way by just like it's going to sound shitty but you there's plenty of them in the world you just watch losers fail yeah and there's there's no shortage of examples if you have uh, a good moral balance of like what is wrong and right uh like oh don't do that you know don't be obese don't do drugs don't get divorced don't cheat don't hit you know all these things are there's a lot of people setting the pace to like oh, don't do that you know because that looks like a terrible life to live because it is like like uh toxic traits that will just leave you to like have a not a fulfilling life it, very, happy you were born with an old an old soul like, because a lot of people would yeah, not have figured that stuff out at, at at five years old. I yeah. still haven't figured out half that stuff. I still. Mess with you. <laughs> well, I always were like, I don't want to be a that guy. Yeah. Like uh, that's why I tell him like, don't be that guy. You, you see that guy yelling at like a McDonald's employee. Don't you want to be that guy? <laughs> yeah. So like, just don't be. You do know, something, then I've made it guy. my mission when I see someone treating someone poorly, to stand up for the person that they're treating poorly like and it's uncomfortable i hate confrontation i would like i always say like i'll run to china before i'll fight with somebody but now you when you're confident in yourself and you see someone being wrong to like if you have the power to stand up and say something like someone you know a service worker getting yelled at like hey you don't have to do that yeah you you don't have to do that and standing up for people and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of gumption to do it but i think that we need to start doing that because when you see someone being that guy we need to let them know it's not okay yeah. like it's not okay um when you what what age were you when you started like making art uh my dad which I, every story ever tells me i take with a grain of salt um but apparently when i was like three years old i took four and a half hours to color this balloon in uh but I did it perfectly. Didn't go outside the lines with an orange crayon, and that's kind of what started it. And then uh, around five, six years old, Bob Ross, Bob Ross was on PBS. Oh yeah. Uh, and so I started out uh, with oils. My dad somehow got enough money to buy me a, a little canvas and paints and stuff, and uh, I, I just started doing. And oils is a hard. A lot of people try to avoid that, but I started out in a harder one and a more expensive one too. And I just started nailing it. I just followed a book, like there's a Bob Ross book, step by step. And I, I just taught myself and I did it so well. Uh, teachers didn't even believe me when I showed them, <laughs> even though I, my initials were in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's so frustrating. I'm like, way to support me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how like you kill, I got one thing. And this is how you kill dreams early, yeah. huh? <laughs> like, yeah. But uh, uh, I liked my art talent because it made me feel like i was worth something yeah uh that's when my dad was the proudest my dad was an insane uh like sports addict like would, would watch sports as not his team he he was like the the gamer of today that's always in the chair what you know uh to the point where there's dead skin like he never left it so he wanted yeah. me to be like a pro baseball player like he just wanted that dream but at the same time, even though I did all the sports and everything, I still had the art thing on the side. But that made him just as happy as me doing well in sports. And that made me happy that he was happy. Well, you know, uh, it wasn't... It's finally, he, he was proud and not just, like, pissed off or depressed about his situation or whatever. Because he loved showing, showing me off. Like, like every parent. Yep. You know, and the art thing was... He'd always leave, leave off with that. Like, he, he's a good artist. He's a good artist. Best artist in the class. All that kind of stuff. So, yeah. It, so... Yeah, art was very important to bond with my dad and uh, make me feel like I was worth something other than trailer trash. I was going to say, too, that probably <laughs> so. gave you um, some value with your dad. Like, you mm. felt like that was how you won his love and affection by, like, look what I did. Yeah. And then him going and bragging and showing that he cared about you because mm. he wasn't doing it in other ways at home. Yeah. Yeah. And like just feeling special in a class when we have like an art assignment and everybody kind of looks at me, you know, like, <laughs> like, Gary, time to shine, you know, <laughs> here's my more advanced stick figure than everybody else like at that point, you know. So, it, yeah, just being the art artistic one of the of, of the group is fun. Just like 
there's the the stud athlete of the group there's the hot chick there's the the super smart nerdy one there's the you know and that was the art artistic one you know um so that's a pretty cool thing to be how so. about that bob ross documentary though did you watch that yeah i cried the entire time oh it was so sad <laughs> so I, I was gonna buy a bob ross shirt one day and i was yeah. like i'm so glad i never bought that because now i know that yeah the i tell everybody does not don't buy it and no. i had all that merch did you uh, yeah i'm like oh. oh i'm glad i'm supporting the ross family nope that sucks. Do you think that um, watching him on TV is what made you really want to do oil paintings? Yeah. Yeah, his steps were so so simple for my dumb ass to understand. Um, he made it very clear, like, just very simple. He had the most soothing voice in the world, you know? Just, it's always great nap. Yeah. 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 Mid-afternoon nap voice. It was yeah. perfect. He's like uh, Jim Nance whenever they, he's announcing the Masters. You just lay down on the couch and just go out. Yeah. And it, his process was just so simple. Like, even I could do it. Anybody. That's why, that's why he was so successful, because anybody could, paint, you know, do yeah. it. If you just follow the steps. Like, uh, people say, oh, I don't have God-given talent like you. I, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I wasn't, like, pushed out of the box with this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's something you can on. learn art. <laughs> I always tell people um, the only difference between me and like other people, like you can learn steps and how to do circles and shading and blend it, all that kind of crap. But I think where I differ is like I just have an, an eye. I see a vision of like how it should be laid out. Yeah. Better. Do you, do you see the finished product before? Yeah. Yeah, I can't see. I'm I'm not like that. I I not at all. Yeah. Even building stuff, anything like that, I just I can't see it. So it's literally got to be step by step, and then it turns out completely different than yeah. what. Probably I, the I half ADHD to. you have. Half ADHD. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, that's <laughs> quarter actually. I'm going to use this word to <laughs> nauseating, but the romantic part of it is yeah. like uh, I do have a vision. It never turns out the way I want because okay. that, that's the way of the world. All right. But you have yeah. to trust the process and what it is, what it is, and you have to let it be and go in layers, just like life. And there's layers that people may not even notice but you do yeah and you have to tr let it organically uh create itself it, you, you try to control as much as you can but uh at, at some point you just have to let it be and trust the process um you know and uh, i feel bad for this generation of kids with art um I, we traditional artists are dying breed yeah uh kids are born not with crayons and finger paints they're born with ipads and eye pencils to draw <laughs> and like it's it's on me <laughs> like it's um uh there's a process of painting that teaches you more. It's not about the image. The, the actual image of the painting is the least important thing. It's the process of it. And it teaches you a lot of things of discipline and patience and process. And you feel like you got your hands dirty, which you did. Uh, and it's real. You can smell it. It's flawed. It has my cat hair in it. <laughs> you know, I sneezed on it. You know, whatever. It's, it's real. It's me. And uh, kids, you can't get that in a plastic world and digital world. You know, uh, there's paintings out there that's going to outlive me if, uh, if I do well. And uh, it's not lost in cyber space. There's an original in the world. And if it gets thrown away or covered up, whatever, one day, so be it. Uh, but that's, that's the real stuff. Everything I do is real and it's messy, but it's awesome. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's... We'll talk about this in a, a little bit, but like the attention to detail. So um, I was at a reveal you did, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Like, but... You are namesake Leroy, um, which you kind of dubbed with the rooster nest and gym therapy. Like the sparkle that you captured in his eye, like when I saw that painting, like I was just like bawling because I remember like just that's you would see that in him when you looked at him and you mm -hmm. talked to him like that spark in his eyes, like what attracted you to Leroy and you caught that. And that was one thing that it always stands out to me, that attention to detail. That right, a lot that's of people the first thing you, th you see in that painting is his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the most cool. important part too. That's where everybody looks first, you know? So it's very hard, like important to nail like, the eyes. Uh -huh. that's the first thing you learn when you paint is besides structure and everything, like nail that eye. <laughs> it has if to be wonky, hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, and my favorite part is when you put that little dot of white and it just looks like the eye. It doesn't okay. look like an eye until you put that dot in the reflection. Yeah. It's and awesome. it kind of follows you around the room no, mm. no matter where you're at. Yeah. Um, you, you know you did it right when the iPhone recognizes it as a picture. Like okay. It, 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 <laughs> All right. It's a square. It does. Yeah, it does. Um, when I pull up Leroy, that painting comes yeah. up in my... So I'll send you a picture of the painting you can put up here. Okay. Um, but it is in the background at my studio. Yes, so it was in record. the one we did mm -hmm. two weeks ago about yeah. women empowerment. So what did you do after high school? You said that you went to military. What branch did you go? I went to the Army, Army Reserves. Uh, 
I went as a traditional, like, I, I'm a, a lot of weird things, but like people never even believe me when I said I was in the military because who I am and everything. Uh, they, two things people never believe about me. Never did drug in my life. Uh, I was in the military. Yeah, that's Oh, and truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't make sense. Uh, so, but that's my life. It's pure, just chaos like that. But, um, so I, I joined the army because I, I was stereotypically had no outs from the country. I didn't want to be a gas well person or a sheets employee or a Walmart employee or I don't know. Like, oh, I just didn't want to. You wanted to get out of here. Yeah, I, I, I wanted more in life than uh, whatever you fall into is, is a job. And I have a, you know, whatever wife with kids I can't fucking afford or planned on and i'm just overwhelmed and like i had too much of that in my life as examples of like that's not a good route to go uh it, it for me uh so I, I did my very best i'm like so i had to leave here as much as i love the country and there's a lot of beautiful things with the country that you know i i'll never lose in here uh but i knew for my own my own good like I'm not, i was never meant to be here I, I was never a kid that like i didn't love mud hunting fishing drinking beers in cornfields like I, I just wasn't nothing turned me on that way um even though i tried it all i, I just not, that culture really didn't click to me you don't like uh, country music no <laughs> i go to a lot of concerts and i would if you want like i don't give a shit live music yeah, I, yeah, friends, yeah. I, I don't care me too but yeah personally i'll never but uh yeah, so I yeah I didn't really adopt the the country bunkin lifestyle. Uh, that was just wasn't for me. So um, and I, my dad did not obviously save or plan for my future in college or anything like that. So that wasn't coming. I had no money. So I joined the military from my recruiting in uh in high school, and I didn't join it because I have any any level of rah rah America. I don't have that either. I don't vote. I'm not political. I'm not religious. Um, I don't have any stance on anything really. Uh, I'm just putting my head down, just trying to make it. And so I went to the military just to get out. So my heart was not in it. Uh, would I do it again? Yes, because it did kickstart me to being a way stronger person. It does teach you that. If you're not there just for the politics of being in the military or whatever, like I think everybody should serve just like Israel, like two years, because you learn things from you. Not not even from the, the weapons and the jobs and stuff like that. It's just a physical um uh, th things you learn about yourself just uh, how you push yourself physically yeah. stuff like yeah. that yeah getting smoked for the first time in my life you know and pushing yourself physically that you didn't even think was possible and on top of that meeting my first uh, first black people first Jewish people first Mexican people you know actual diversity for the first time mm -hmm. so culturally I started getting kicked off from just knowing pretty much only white my entire my and just actually um, uh, experiencing what this country really is with with all these cultures and backgrounds and ethnicities and stuff so like i never came back you know i, I my dad wasn't racist or probably a little bit probably a little bit homophobic too but you know he's country yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah you know in, me and my first uh gay people stuff like that too like it's just my world it, from like no, knowing nothing in the country to, to also being plunged into my first flight, my first out of state experience, my first like like being away from home, being on my own with like a bunch of strangers that don't look like me, that don't think like me, with different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and challenge my my brain academically with the the army and more importantly like, physically. Uh, what was was crazy? I'd do it again, even though nothing came of it. Never went overseas or anything like that, but. Um, so from the army, I, I went to uh, PTI, which is a technical college, uh, w with a, a good buddy of mine, Tyler. Um, he, we just roomed together, so that was a nice transition for me to not completely be on my own when I go to city. I had a friend from high school, and we lived together, and that's why I uh, explored graphic design uh, out of the army. And I dropped out of college because I hate computers because I'm a traditional artist. I was the only one that could paint or draw in that whole class, and but they can do it on a computer. And I felt robbed from like, I don't yeah. like this. And it was graphic design, so I'm doing like logos and font and Budweiser at like it's not art, you know. It's so I dropped out of that and I just hung out in the city, going job to job to job to job, and just figuring out my life and slowly picking up the pieces, you know. Were you still painting life. on the side too? In that I transition? took a from 17 from the military like throughout high school i was always just you know lazy kid not focused on stuff so like you know mr woodrow would give me a special assignment because i'm more inclined to and i wouldn't screw off like i never i never went at this like 
hard until I was like 25. What, so, what was the catalyst? What made you decide to start doing this? Um, shit jobs. Really? Did yeah, you just get tired and realizing that time's flying by and I'm not, because I'm not, we all do that when we're young. We have yeah. all the time in the mm -hmm. world. It's going to happen. It's, we're going to sit here and it's going to fall on our lap, right? Uh, and again, my brain was wired when I go, oh shit, like I'm 25. Uh, the screwing around, being being dumb and lazy and uh, getting fired and stuff in your 20s, which is okay. Um, uh, I, I finally, well, I want money now, so I got a Class A license and uh, started truck driving uh, because it paid a lot. It's just, it, yeah. That's another thing. Trucking is not in my heart at all. I just, <laughs> I just did it for cash because it was a lot of money with no degree. And uh, so I learned that and I started... Uh, rebuilding my life pretty quick with finally a good you know 50k plus whatever from like you know 20k yeah uh, sure. life-changing stuff paid off my my debts and I was able to get you know get engaged and all that kind of stuff and get get a better place and you know uh, so but truck driving uh, I didn't do like over the road I did local stuff so that's more ball busting -y stuff I have to unload it by hand and I was part of a really really bad company it was just exhausting on every level my terrible schedule i was just exhausted to my bones and i've been doing it for a while and i rolled up and this is i always tell people if you ever want to change that's why i learned in the army you need a truly emotional significant significant event to change you can't just say it has to hit you here in your gut you know and like really pay attention to it and i have many of those moments in my life and uh so a significant emotional event happened at that truck stop is 2 a.m. in Forest Hills, Pittsburgh, outside a country golf club. Uh, this is quiet, and you just hear the wind, like movie quality. Like, <laughs> I hated my eyes, exhausted, I was cold. Like, I just pull as alone, it's dark. It's just, just ominous stuff, and I'm like, I pulled it out, and I had a shit day ahead of me, and I just stopped pulling out this ramp, and I just stopped, and I just thought, like, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, I'm still gonna be, like, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and I'm still gonna be doing this shit. And uh, I just said, I'm better than this because of the art thing. Like I, I knew I had a way out and I was being lazy and t time was fleeting and I'm like, okay. So I almost quit, just drove it back and just thank God I did and that would have been crazy. <laughs> but uh, I wish I had balls, but, uh, but from then on, I, I went hard to start refining my skills and by 30 so it took me five years to get to the point where i could had enough confidence uh to go public with, with selling mm -hmm. and stuff but i did warm up uh and how people react to my art by giving things away um like kim uh, i painted her kids sent it by never seen her in like 10 years or whatever uh it is no master plan of mine either like when i was starting to learn portraits and getting uh, refining my skills there was no okay then there's a business plan ahead no i i just wanted to use my art not just to paint for myself because that's just like masturbating it just doesn't matter like i want other people to enjoy this and i just want to stockpile paintings of mine and stuff so i'm like and i always want to touch the heart like you know i have a very like romantic mindset at all times like i want things to be movie quality as much as i can and it won't happen unless you create it to do so so I, I i started painting everybody and sending these gifts out to the world and it just showed up at their doorstep and through word of mouth people pm me to paint their thing mm -hmm. and that was no master plan of mine it just organically happened you know, this my art was never a business plan. So. There's well, a phrase in AA. Our I was just gonna say you know, that. You, you, yeah, <laughs> no, you, you keep what you have by giving it away, and I never knew what that meant. Honestly, like I, I understand like the context of it, but I never really got that until like what you just said right there. But when we started doing this too, like we don't charge, we never charged for classes or anything like that because we wanted to build a good product before we started. Uh, uh, even people voluntarily pay us for stuff now, but we gave away all our services at the beginning mm -hmm. just to get just get out there that's pretty incredible well it's a good feel because you know even if it's a bad painting it's free you're welcome sure, yeah. yeah sorry i annoyed yeah. you with my friendship <laughs> <laughs> but uh sorry, i annoyed you with my heart and yeah soul. right yeah. yeah and uh it, it's to help me out too uh mentally to give myself purpose that i'm touching lives and what i love about it it made no sense because like why would derek do this he's always the sarcastic asshole in high school you know um but meanwhile there's always a, a way deeper side of me than i let anybody know and that was my painting is the best of me and i just 
when fa- social media really started kicking off and Facebook and stuff, like this is another big important thing why I started sending these things out. I would see people now. Uh, it was a real like bitch fest and like depressing stuff. Everybody's struggling kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just negative, negative, negative. And like, so I'm, I kind of picked people that are going through the hardest times. Either they lost a pet or they lost a loved one or they're uh, re- recovering from addiction or whatever. And I'm like, if I maybe just paint this, it might give them this boost, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's why I want it. I want this gesture out of nowhere that made no sense. I'm not your family. We never hung out or we... we haven't seen each other in 10 years yeah but it's just i wanted to be completely random and maybe i can spark somebody to do the same you know kind of pay it forward kind of thing and uh i'll keep doing it to the day i die like like save one was kind of like my mentality like save one you know because there's a lot of times where i you know i I look to the horizon and no one's there you know and i kind of want to do that my one small way with art i can't do it all you know but you know I'm, i'm doing better than most with that yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What What do you think is your most memorable experience of doing one of these non commissioned pieces where you're just, oh, just helping got someone? Uh, Jesus, they're, they're so different. Even though it's the same like steps, but uh, everybody's different. Uh, there's no. I mean, Leroy, Leroy was. I have top fives, I guess, of there's ranking, you know, because some people were closer to me than others and stuff. You know, I have corp from corporations to what we did, you know, very intimate stuff. Um, and I do them at Comic Cons too, reveals, you know, uh, it's always a cry fest, like everybody, like, and hugs because it's, it's just, it's Emotional. a touching thing. And uh, because you just know this painting, like, I, blue i didn't blow it but like i sacrificed 40 hours 50 hours 60 hours 20 whatever it is for seconds of a smile Mm -hmm. and they know they i think they all get that in a moment and maybe that's crazy by me but i have something that like no one can take from me and and us yeah in that moment and stuff so everybody's unique uh i never had a bad one reveal because that's always risky like Talk about anxiety, you know. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> I'm like, this is why I'm really good with it. And like, cause I, I put myself in situations where it's sink or swim, right in the deep end. I'm like, I'm knocking on a stranger's door in a lot yeah. of cases with a li- living room f- full of mourning people. Usually, I'm always painting dead things, you know. Uh, usually, and so the, the, the tension's already there, and I have to nail it with a painting, you know. And they don't know me. And I don't know them, and I don't know if they even like the size of the canvas, the the style I have, the colors I choose, the the portrait I use, uh, you know, the reference and everything. Uh, there's a lot on the line, like, mm-hmm. and I can bomb and like, well, I got paid, <laughs> 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 or, or or I did it for free, yeah, you know, and I just made this gesture and like bombed and stuff like that. So there's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, I love it because like it's as good as our like a life experience can be like when we put down all our walls we're not online we're not filtering anything you know it's that i'd like for for fuck's sake it's i just want you yeah real for one you're not lying to me we're not there's nothing fake like you can't do it now i can't do it now and i just get moments of it yeah and that has to satisfy the beast in me until the next one and i'm kind of always chasing a dragon mm-hmm. but that's fine uh and it'll never end. But, uh, yeah. So when I go to the grave with no children, no one hold my hand, like, it, I'll, I'll think about these reveals. Uh, I, I really don't have a, a true favorite, um, to be honest. Because I, I love them all. Yeah. No. And they all come from a different experience. And just to talk about, like, how many hours you put into these, um, you have to do research to it as well. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, looking at Leroy's, lime green was leroy the rooster leroy all of that in the background he's wearing a picture like one of his best pictures that you used um and you captured all of that and that's something you know you weren't close with leroy like you didn't know leroy you knew deidre you know his his family like his sister and his mom um i actually didn't 
Yeah, yeah, you know Miss Moyer, yeah. you? I didn't I, see. I knew none, none of this. You because, didn't know Miss Moyer? No, because I wasn't those webs like we talked about. I wasn't yeah. in anybody's webs. I didn't uh, know his intent. Like, I just didn't even learn people's family lineages or anything like really? that. Really? So, huh. so I'm like, what, when he, he passed, and I, I, it was just a gift for Deidre. That's, yeah. Uh, but I did put on, on Facebook Live, like, can you please let me know? who her parents are where they're at and stuff like that and then like you know Catherine's like that's her gym team like oh my god <laughs> yeah. you know I'm like all collecting so like, all this stuff is random acts yeah. of kindness for yeah. me good that's for you really cool. yeah, so that's it's awesome. all it's all just Deidre uh, what do you do working. to like research that when you you know when you know someone passes like you didn't just figure that out you it, had to the, look it's the eye thing I, I mentioned before uh, if you're a good artist you, you know what looks good yeah you know what I mean uh, like so you can tell who doesn't have a good eye so you, we, we can find that out in our profile pictures who has a good eye like who has bad pictures you know um out of focus bad angle bad lighting uh you're just uh, everything like you could tell who doesn't yeah so it's kind of like when uh someone like hey i lost my pet i'm like send me every photo you have that, you Instead know of and i go through them and i figure out how i can marry it into a background to make it interesting i just don't paint like green background sticker the, the yeah you know i want to have an art edge to it too besides just nailing the uh the likeness so uh I, I yeah and i definitely want an effect where the look looks unique and uh i want to catch a moment you know hopefully and sometimes like references are so bad i can't do it because it's so out of focus or they just don't have the, you know i'd rather not i learned that the hard way yeah uh so it has to be and he, he, i barely got one from him that that was good enough mm -hmm. so and so that's not the make up because if I miss a scar, a freckle, or something, it's not going to look like the person. So reference is really key. So I, it's just my eye will catch like ones. I'll, I'll go through it like a there it is, pretty much. And that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Archer yeah. escape, huh? Yeah, and, you know, and I obviously I'll, I'll hit the background of if this is a gift, say like I'm like, okay, who were they? What's their favorite color? Do you want their name in it? Do you want the death date? Do you want flowers? Do you like um, all this kind of stuff? So for Leroy, like, has to be Kawasaki green, you know, and that's how I married in with the chicken. So the background is as interesting as the foreground, and then uh, all the layers of airbrushing and clear coating glitter and everything that to make it way more interesting to look at than just the a per portrait of a person, you know what I mean? But I learned that over a lot of time to make it just a little bit more attractive to look at it was crazy yeah. too because i had just got this rooster tattoo and then that is pretty similar to what you have on there i was like wow that is that was it was pretty remarkable it was like one of those ugh, <laughs> feelings um and you'd also do comic cons you go to those like mm -hmm. all over the united states right yeah um what's it like showing a celebrity a painting of themselves um it's it's awesome uh, like and i do it purely for novelty you know uh at, at the same time with comic cons i just fell into comic con instead of like the the smug whitey fe you know, art festival you can find in you know napa valley or whatever the hell you know mm -hmm. uh, where i'm just painting birds and like really safe pg things for people's like offices and walls like that wouldn't keep me interested so you know and i i have a nerdy level like everybody you know i love like video games and pop culture and stuff so i started like I want to have fun with art. You know, these uh, art festivals are like, they have jury that you have to pass and it's really, really prestigious and smug and I don't like that. So these Comic-Cons, like, I'm painting like fun things like Sub-Zero or Deadpool or whatever the hell. Uh, it's a lot more entertaining and I can do whatever I want. Uh, and the show itself is entertaining because of the people out there. So cosplayers and comic book nerds and all, all this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's people watching like on speed like it's awesome mm -hmm. you know so it's an entertaining show that's why i like bring strangers with me to to see it uh i try to share my world with whoever wants to come and uh with the celebrity stuff they're there to make money mm -hmm. obviously they're charging per autograph and stuff like that so when one comes up i obviously want to paint a celebrity so my prints get sold for that celebrity for people to collect or get signed themselves uh so you try to like okay um you know, Scarlett, uh, Joe Hanson, whatever the hell, uh, she's going to be there, so I'm going to do a portrait of her, so I can probably sell that portrait to, like, a mega fan, get it signed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so when I choose my... I just don't paint anybody. I kind of have to dig them and have to have an interesting enough character to paint. And when I do this really big painting, I 
you know, put my big dick on the table pretty much. And like, there it is, you know, and there's a whole while fact. There's usually like a hundred people in line. So it's like an advertising thing uh, that helps my booth out because they'll come find me or yeah. they'll come find that original. And uh, I also might book the celebrity for a, a commission or uh, like a retweet or like, I'm just taking a shot in the dark. Sure. And not nine times out of 10. No, but <laughs> you miss every shot you don't take. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty much so, uh, and it has worked out. I got a couple celebrity clients uh, from it, uh, which is great. These are like little things in my life that like, um, let me know I'm not doing it in, in vain. Mm -hmm. Just for me, like I'm just nailing things I could, this is, my whole life has been a get, get what I wasn't meant to have as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, like my parent really put in my head, like you do not, we're, you're not gonna see Hawaii, you're not gonna, uh, sell art you're not going to be uh well off you know, it's, it's always a struggle so i i'm always proving it to, to him and myself and my family like like hey look i yeah, made it yeah and you could have had this yeah. by the way you could yeah. have had all this yeah. you know i think i was truly meant for for my efforts of pure strangers i think i was truly meant to be a, like an ultimate family guy to be a part of a big family unit be a key member in a family and i just was born into the wrong thing pretty much uh, that's what my efforts seem like at, at times. Yeah. Yeah. Cause my, my care level, my thoughtfulness is like, I don't even see it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, you know, to, to find people as thoughtful as me. Like you're one of them, Yeah. <laughs> you know, that since I got to know you, uh, and that's great. So, but I think too, I've, I've looked at it this way. We can't make our family show up for us the way that we want to, but we can find family in other people. Mm. And there, I have people at my gym that I look at like second moms dads you know sisters and i look i find that relationship that i craved crave with my own sibling with other people in the gym you know and i just have to sometimes you just have to find your family outside of your blood mm -hmm. and that's okay too um because we we can't make people show up for us the way that we want them to but we can find that same feeling with other people and it's it's a hard thing to do to let go of that mindset um but I think when we do, you become at peace. Yeah. Because you can't force people to be there for you in your life. I mean, that's the 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 main through line through all this uh, was having no family. As in, mother's moved away. I do have siblings, but they're all rogue and across the country. People are dead and gone. Uh, everybody's, it's just, there's no healing anything. So I did that. Like, that's always what I've been uh, as a kid, even in high school. I was a people pleaser in high school. I was always afraid to like confront my friends. They're always a little bit more popular, a little bit more cooler, I'm more ahead of the game than me. They dated first and all that kind of stuff. And I just was, I didn't want them to leave, you know? Um, so I always was just funny and went along with whatever they did kind of thing. And then I got on my own. Like I went in that dance floor of life and I only dance with strangers. There's no family support. I can't come, there's no safety net. So uh, learning how to uh, make strangers friends and hopefully into family is all I've been doing for you know last 20 years of my life. And it is a dangerous, like hurtful mm -hmm. <laughs> game because you know I've been through more than I can count where like I would dedicate a lot of my money, time, thoughtfulness, heart, uh, everything I have to relationships that ultimately fail because I'm at war with selfishness. I just, I, I was born into a world of selfishness from the, like a selfish act from my mother to everybody in between. Uh, like when, and people do get close to me, I'm personable and I, I cut through a lot of shit and song and dance that people go through. And like, we come close pretty quick, but that comes at a cost because uh, I get everything going, but eventually I'm going to need something back. And when it's their turn, it, they're just not there. Not there. And, uh, don't confuse selfishness with survival, though, because that was kind of built into you from from two years old. Was you had to be selfish to be able to take care of yourself and actually mm -hmm. actually. Are you talking about yeah. selfishness of others? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> if someone calls me selfish, I'm gonna flip the like, table. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was my bad. <laughs> no, no, it's, and I know it's like a very basic uh, human personality trait to have it is selfishness. Like, I, but I'm not talking about like survival is like getting food and shelter and clothing yeah, yeah. and shit but just i'm trying to set an example you know god damn it like i i'm in these homes and i just dedicate significant significant time in my life where i'm not going to get it back you know the number one thing 
even my wife says this to me, you know, like, why would you? They would never do it for you. Mm -hmm. And to get over that, like, if I stopped at that, then nothing happens. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't have to, because that is a really good excuse. I get it. But that's not the point. I'm kind of proving that it doesn't, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people would just stop there. I'm like, Tristan wouldn't do it for me. Why, why would I paint Le Leroy for, she's not going to do that. So I'm going to, so nothing happens. And I'm not okay with nothing. So I'll take a shot in the dark and maybe some, I'll plant a seed that will grow over nothing. And I just have no faith in you or whatever the hell. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, I, I lose more than I win for sure. And, uh, I did get wise enough. I'm not so gullible where they can just use me forever. Like I do, I guess you would call it love bombing on some level, but, uh, because I want you in my life. Uh, I see some, an X factor new that's probably going to improve my life and we can work together. Uh, but this is what you have to do when you're out on your own. I, I'm not going to sit around and for, wait for a stranger just to fall in love with me. I have to do the first things. I have yeah. to make the first moves. Absolutely. I have to introduce myself. I have to give you uh, a, 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 a value of me. So I have to take you to dinner, take you to a concert, give you art, ask about you, call you when you don't call me, text you when you don't text me, uh, be there when no one else is. Like I'm, I've been there when no one helped me move, but I helped you move. That kind of stuff It's just all these little tasks to gain their trust to make to give myself value to them in their lives and it, it, it gets there pretty quick and i've been there many many times but they will hit this like selfish threat hole, threshold where i'm like i gotta stop because my mental health because when they're not seeing me man i'm in front of a canvas like crying or like like hit my head against the wall in frustration you know because it, it's just the littlest things of of selfish acts that like that's all I see in people yeah. like when red flag, red flag, like why would you be even like little things of, of selfishness? You know what I mean? Like I got myself a coffee, but not you, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, these are just little red flags. It's not like there's one and I leave. No, but like I, I give people years of my life, you know, to see, see if I can inspire them to be better with me. Cause it's not an ego thing. I'm like, I'm better than you be on my pace. No, I'm like, can we, I want you to be with me so we can rock this together. Howl at the moon, be romantic and, you know, paint the town red and we can have fun. We don't need to drama and like be at each other's throats. And like when I show up, Oh, Oh, Derek's going to be here. I know one thing's not happening. It's like, oh, Derek's going to be here. He's going to bog us down with politics or his religion. <laughs> He's going to bring his <laughs> shitty kids. Uh, like, I, I, I'm it's like, oh, Derek's going to be here. We're going to do something fun. And I'm, I, yeah, I'm not a drag, you know, it, but I, with today's people, man, and their selfishness, I always have to do a lot of work to get them out of that shit. So one thing I want to touch on, you talked about, like, when you give something and having an expectation, um, as you say, my Buddhist sleeve, like I listened to uh, Pema Chodron, who's like a famous Buddhist nun, and she wrote a book. And one of her books was about giving a gift without the, without an expectation mm -hmm. of how people would react. And she said she learned this lesson because she sent someone this like extravagant gift that she knew that they really wanted. And she's like, I sent it. And then I didn't hear anything back. And she's like, and then I waited like another week another week and I finally reached out to their spouse and was like hey did they get this gift and they were like yeah they got it and she's like I didn't even get a thank you now I didn't get anything back and then she's like then I had to sit and meditate on it and remind myself that I didn't give this gift for the idea of receiving anything back I gave mm. it to give them joy and if it gave them joy in that moment then I need to just let that go and when I started doing that too I stopped taking things a little like uh, less personal mm -hmm. as personal attacks because like I'm a recovering people pleaser yeah. if you remember me from high school like, I could have molded into whatever you wanted me just so you would let me sit at the table with you and you would like me yeah and I would be whoever you needed me to be at that moment just so again you wouldn't leave mm -hmm. that you would like me yeah and it's so exhausting yes it's exhausting and you're always thinking a step ahead of like, how do I keep this person in my life? What do I got to do? What do they need? And it is exhausting. Mm -hmm. And it's also healthy to create those boundaries where you're like, this person just uses and uses and uses and uses and never yeah. comes back into the relationship to bring it. So finding that balance, man, it has to be, yeah. it is exhausting. I mean, I have endless stories of like, you know, <laughs> I'll use this one. This is the most recent crazy one of like my efforts to when I got back and I'm not looking like I bought you a beer 
buy me one back or else I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a lot of little things. And I, I'm not, like, especially with, like, Louis Royce and, get, like, I'm not like, this family owes me now. No, yeah, yeah. Not, not at all. But it is nuanced. It's not just one way or the other with, like, uh, gift giving and what you, or expectations of people when you create a, a good a good experience or whatever. Else. Um, but ultimately, I want you to say yes to me when the time comes. And when you don't, that's that's when I start going through the playlist of what I did for you. And like, you couldn't, this is one time. One time one that time, I needed God you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it's, and I'm not a not new person. Like, ever, right? I'm so self-reliant. Like, it's not even like, oh, I'm going to now burden you with all these things in my life. Not at all. I'm like, I want you to meet me at Applebee's on a minute's notice. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. You know, but uh, the most recent, like this example, I went on my birthday last year to uh, a Primus concert uh, in, in Columbus. Uh, I bought $250 like VIP. This band, I don't even know. I did it for him on my birthday. I drove. He said he would buy me a, a shirt and beer all night. He didn't. Bought me a shirt, no beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won this uh, contest where the uh, lead singer uh, did like uh, a trivia thing and he won it and he got this unique signed thing. Give mm -hmm. my ticket for that. Uh, I've got autograph poster. I like the both posters. I gave him the one with the stronger signature. Um, I I cheered him on, supported him. It, it like it was the best. Uh, drove him back, like, and he was very very close off kind of person. Like you know, you know. Uh, and like the next day, I'm like, hey, you know, we had lots of fun. We're gonna have fun again. And he would just say, oh, my fun is none of your concern. What? <laughs> like, all right. Okay, so uh, I every everything to lose on every level you can think of as far as like even financial to emotional, you know, uh, and that's example of the people I've bring in because I give everybody a chance. I see red flags, by the way. No, I, I'm like, oh, never mind. No, I see your red flags. But what I don't want to do, uh, my wife always like, why would you, you know, she, she's the voice of reason. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> Why would you give him a chance? I'm like, I got to see because I, because I'm controversial person in some people's eyes and I would like them to give me a chance. Could take a chance. Yeah. On and that. I don't yeah. want to prejudge. And we, so I give everybody like my hundred percent effort in my life, even though I'm like, I can see you coming down the road of how this is probably going to end, but I do want to be surprised romantically, let you turn or, or do the right thing and blow me away for once. Yeah. You know? So I think that's meeting me halfway. Like all these grand gestures I do for you is easy. That's the easiest part. Yeah. But that selfish mindset just stops people so much because they always, for, they first think, what's my time? What's my money going to cost? You know, what's, you know, it's before how's Derek feeling? You know, that's such a weird response that you receive yeah, too. Like I can't even like, cause sometimes you can say, think, think ahead of like, maybe this person's getting the wrong impression, but that's a very, yeah. very strange response and it's sad that yeah. that happens and, and that's just it's always kind of like that they, they'll hit this this line of like there's you're hopeless you know <laughs> and i gotta move on and i do cut it off you know so i'm not just always stuck in it in a toxic relationship where i'm like suffering and they're getting everything you know but it, it costs me man it's very it's very frustrating and i spare no expense from emotional to financial to like find a stranger in this world that might be family but after what i've been through in the last few years finding myself and almost like like ending it all kind of shit, uh i i did hit like strides and new rules and re reset a pace for myself do so. you think you kind of attract people that are in, in a way it's, it's almost like self-sabotage like you you find the people that like are the hardest to yeah, get like to the chick that and you're always dates like assholes. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I feel attacked believe me <laughs> <laughs> Bel uh, believe me uh, yeah I'm like Tris again <laughs> uh, no man like it, it, it's funny because for sure I have my mom and me and she's like an ex bar bar slut kind of thing uh, but uh I have so many walks of life through the city and my art and jobs and everything. I have every walk of life. It's not just a type of person. Mm -hmm. You know, I have everybody like, and we'll see. And it's, I just, I take in everybody. Like if you ever like go to my Halloween party or, or a birthday party, like in, there's just a pit of different walks of life. It's not just 
country people or goth people yeah. or s- sports people or uh, prep people or parents or a singles. Cornucopia. You know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But, but that's my life because I, I live a completely alone, like, random life and I go where the wind blows me pretty much. And, like, and that's pretty cool. But, uh, and I do find winners. Like, it's not all just, you know, I, I know it's, like, on a negative-leaning side shit, but um, when it is a win and people do someone does show up it's like hell yeah yeah i want more of that though yep. you know because there's a reason why people have multiple kids you always ask like why isn't one enough well you just want more love in your life is it's the best reason i've i've heard for somebody uh to have like multiple kids and stuff uh and i want that too you know people just don't stop at one ferrari to get two to get you know it's yeah. you always want more it's our, our shitty <laughs> we want more love you know so um and i have a lot to give so that's, I mean, that's kind of the same. We talk about the gym kind of being a melting pot. Like we have people and it's so cool because we have people of every different background in the gym. And we grew up in an area where we didn't see many people other than what we look like. And I think the best thing I did for myself was moving to Baltimore and getting exposed to different cultures and then coming back and like you learn how to be open and you learn like there are people that think different than us and they live different and they had different experiences when we all living here kind of had the same experience so Mm -hmm. that and you do you bring in you just attract all kinds of different people just from the i think the light that you would admit um let's talk about you almost quitting art when what year did that happen uh so three years now four years Something yeah, like that. Around 2020? I think we were all having yeah. mental make- breakdowns around that time. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was probably a year before like COVID hit, something like that, where I was or maybe right in, I don't know, I can't remember. It's a wash for sure. But This uh, last four years really seems, uh, I it doesn't even make yeah. sense. Yeah. Like when, when I hit 30s, things were looking good, and then I lost my dad, um, and then that's where shit started going south for me. And I didn't think I'd even cry for him or anything like that, but he was the one and only family member in my mind that was losable where it mattered, I guess. Yeah. Um, Still your dad. Yeah. You know, I, I lost him out of state. He was in Michigan. I don't know if he's cremated or buried. I just got a phone call and f- from my brother, and that was it. But what people don't know with, like, um, I was going to talk about it one day, like, at a calorie, but I don't care anymore. But my, my main goal was... As an artist, I get a lot of people build their own narrative about me, which is some of it pre- is pretty crazy to like how much money I make or my agenda of doing it. And the stories I hear from like, and it, it's all built around people's egos and insecurities, like who I am, why I do what I do. And um, I did it just to get him back. Like the one, there's one major thing. If I just made something of myself, maybe I can get him back, <clears throat> you know, and... Um, start rebuilding and shit so when he died my main goal of making it as an artist was uh, done yeah so now i had to do it truly alone with like not that like dream goal which was a pipe dream but it was cool that was still in the background at all times mm-hmm. and uh so my main goal as an artist was was done it wasn't money it wasn't uh ego or anything like that so now i had to carry on with i don't know doing this for strangers and with very little return like for uh money i don't give a shit i grew up poor <laughs> like i can do it again uh i don't like things <clears throat> like i don't need things um it's nice when you can but i definitely it's not required my art was not a business thing it was to keep me healthy and help others kind of thing and uh and then everybody didn't do so well with me that i thought was close to me after that death that you know the close family strangers i made in my life uh from the the family i married into uh, did the the worst things uh my wife didn't did the worst things i guess as far as like recognizing what i needed uh to carry on this this thing it's hard when people are grieving because you don't know how to show up for them sometimes and i was difficult when i was grieving like i know that like i'm a difficult person when it comes to grief yeah so i think it's scary for a lot of people they don't know how to show up for you and i I, i'm completely out of practice with grief because i'm not a family man like i don't i'm not around grandma's dying or like you know any family deaths in there's no family unit eating sandwiches after the thing to to cry out with and hold your hand so yet again i'm in this world where i had to do something on my own yet again and i have to do it the right way to 
maintain my home and my job and not fall apart, turn to drugs or anything like that. I just had to suck it up yet again in my life. Uh, and, you know, the people that could have been there uh, went on this kind of, I got a kitten to like fill a hole. It, it sounds silly, but uh, I, I got a kitten to like fill this hole in my life. I got it from uh, the McGuire's farm. Uh, it was just meant to be. And uh, because I got that kitten, I, I should fill this hole. Uh, like, I, there's just a campaign of shit talking me on this on this text chain of people I've, you know, made dinners for, art, all this kind of stuff. Just like, he, he's an asshole, he didn't ask you, blah, 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 like, get over it. Like, you know, just be, being the, the worst thing. Dumb, uh. idiot, selfish, prick, like, over it. I'm like, what if I brought a rainbow home? <laughs> like, I didn't bring a prostitute home. You did adopt a kid. <laughs> yeah, I didn't buy a new car that like, we can't afford. Like, I did, I saved another little th creature to love, and uh, that, and that really, uh, like, threw me. It, it just exposed people's selfishness yet again. Yeah. You know, and they, they were selfish all along, and they had no foresight. Like, I tried to set an example for for so many years of, like, seeing beyond, like, reading in between the lines. You know, uh, being there, uh, they just weren't, and it just tore everything apart. And I just felt like really alone. And like these are people I don't even talk to that that text thread. My my mother in law, best friends, uh, you know, quasi friends are all gone. Like their, their red flags were. Yeah. I had to leave, but you know, so that put me into like a spiral of like wanting to give up. And everything because what's the fucking point yeah you know and um and i can't even imagine a world where i would be that selfish like i can't relate i just can't i don't have that mindset i just don't and uh, yeah so i when you live like a long life as in my 30s and you go through like abuse and poverty and divorce and pedophile baseball coaches and like all, the army and uh all this kind of shit you just you have to have callous on you to to make it through like every and resilience every, yeah. yeah and you get so callous where you, like i wish i can cry at things that you probably should so i turned to uh drinking uh and to, so i could feel mm -hmm. uh because i got really you know my sober brain is so disciplined i hate it uh so i wanted to to cry the right way and think why like it just i like the way it turned me into that but not out of control though. Like I'm, I'm too smart for that. Uh, I, I always saw it, even though the light of the tunnel was just a, a pinhole size. Like I knew I was going to get myself out of it, but I just needed to mourn by myself because I don't have practice mourning. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't. So I had to figure out mourning for the first time with nobody holding my hand. You know, because I had no one in my life that gave a shit enough to do that uh, the right way, at least. So I had to figure it out on my own again. And art wasn't doing it anymore. Uh, things just got bleak for a minute. Well, and you associated your dad with art, yeah, too. It was so, like your one thing. Yeah, your one. Yeah. So, um, but I, I, I went through a process because I've done it as a kid. Like I know how to pick myself up. I don't need. I've been doing my own therapy ever since I have memories. You know, that's there's no therapy as a kid and stuff like that. There's no support like that. So, like the way my brain was wired, I always figured myself out to like not do the stereotypical life ruining things like drugs and like hitting women and <laughs> cheating yeah. and shit like that. Like it's very hard not to, a lot of people want to fall in and they do because it's, it's kind of easy. It's mm -hmm. really, really hard to not fall into that. Like it seems way easier to just fall apart and you can get addicted to sorrow and feeling bad for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's slippery too. Uh, I was definitely addicted to being sad for a minute and, uh, and everything I painted was, I have a chip on my shoulder. You know, I was, I was using this in my art though. Like it, it's really, really complicated because that was also very motivating me to prove them wrong and pick myself up and harnessing this like terrible feeling and putting it out on yeah. canvas. Cause that's all I had. Like you can channel that shit. You don't have to just like fall into it, you know, and through time and time heals. And I got rid of a lot of relationships that were fruitless and that helped a lot, even though, you know, it's hard. Like it can't be, it can't be like this. You know, I was really stubborn to like, I, I, no, I can save it, but to let it go finally was really good for me. 
uh, I don't come back home anymore. I burned every bridge. I just cannot relate to my country friends anymore and their mentality. Uh, like I feel like a foreigner back there now. And sometimes I used to, you just outgrow people in yeah. a different way too. And I don't want to because I, I do. I, I love. I love, I don't hate anybody I lost. I, I don't, I, I miss them. I love them every day, but I know what they are and what they're capable of. And for me, if that mattered to them at all, uh, they weren't doing it. So I have to move on. Mm -hmm. And it's a very painful decision because ultimately I have to be selfish to, to move on uh, from, from my, my home and everything like that. So uh, it's really complicated and you, you hope that you do the right thing, but you know, you, you definitely burn the bridges and uh, you don't want to do that to them, ghost them and, you know, leave them because they did love me on some level. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to miss them. You know, that's a lot of time wasted, I guess. I don't really see it as waste because I, I, I've, they made me who I am. I do it again. I, I do all these terrible relationships again because it made me a very charismatic, uh, interesting person with uh, life experiences and stuff like that. It's very important to me. I'd do it again. Yeah. I look at it too. Like anytime that there was love, it wasn't wasted time mm -hmm. because you still had love in there in the mix. I mean, yeah. as someone who went through a divorce, like I'm the same. Like I only want good things for the people, even exes, whatever. Only want good things for those people, even yeah. if it's that means that those good things aren't happening with me anymore. I yeah. still send them out with like love and and light, and I want good things for you. Yeah. And it, that should be normal. You do, things don't have to end in like a hatred I hate you mm -hmm. never want to speak to you thing I think that we need to be able to like hey we're not going anywhere with this friendship or relationship or whatever but I wish you the best and and move on and have that healthy mindset where we don't have to enclosure is very important it. like like what really like sunk me was just not having closure with my dad mm -hmm. like closure is super super important and with today's culture of like online and everything it's all just shallow like ghosting you just never hear from them again you find out you're blocked or whatever with no closure like with relationships that are like 20 years old i'm like oh so that's it <laughs> okay so you so now you're there just stewing like what the fuck did it happen you know yes with no closure so that really hits you hard you know mentally in, in, and in your heart and stuff uh, and you and you don't have any answers why and that's happened so many times to me and uh, and I had to do it to other people too but they, they knew why like I at least let gave them, them a reason gave them yeah. the closure yeah uh, but you know that's my my rogue lifestyle man to it's they're strangers they owe nothing to me i don't have their blood like uh i i when i i hit the lowest point in my life in this vape shop uh i was painting alone i was like contemplating divorce uh ending every friendship i, I just want to burn everything down you know and, and maybe even in this meat vessel here uh but what it, it might be the wrong outlook but the way I got back up is I accepted a really, really hard truth about just my life. And uh, I was on my knees, head against the wall. Um, I had buddies helping me with the wall. They're all gone at that point. It's cold. I had the doors open because of the fumes of paint and everything. Uh, it's raining. It's like movie quality shit, man. Like <laughs> leaves blowing in. I'm like all alone. I'm drunk. And I'm just like, got this big, beautiful yeah, I got the hand. I'm like, yeah. well, at least I'm nailing that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and I just had another significant emotional event. And uh, I, I listened to it. Like, I can either continue this path because I want to be right in a, in a, in all that kind of shit and all this pride stuff and uh, heartbreak and just leaning into it and going even further down to it ends. Or I, I can start, I'm better than this, mm -hmm. you know? And the one thing I told him, he's like, I just. As we sit here now, like I feel alone, like in this world, it will never really leave me, and I don't, I will never believe that someone loves me. Uh, where I started really hurting myself is because I wanted it so bad, and I'm okay, and I kind of just lightened it up for myself. Like people do love this shit out of me, uh, but they love me like pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, I the best I can get out of people is pizza love. And you can love the shit out of pizza. <laughs> you can love the shit out of shoes. But at the end of the day, you can go without shoes and pizza. Yeah. You know, uh, that's how I am as a, as a person with the, the love I get and how I lose it too. Because you can love the shit out of me for a minute, but you either had too much of me 
or not enough or whatever. And like, but you can't live without me. And they are, every one of them are, you know, and I had to accept that's like, start at two, man. My mom set a pace um, and my dad reinforced it. So, uh, but despite all that, still doing great, you know. Uh, still married. Yeah, still going, yeah, going that's good. great. Like, yeah. well, the thing why that went so hard is like, I would have put, I put my marriage up against anybody. You know, uh, I give Michelle every opportunity a uh, husband give her. Like, I don't burden her with my last name. Uh, I don't burden her with a, a kid, that's her choice. I don't have male ego things where like, you must carry on my name, <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, where's my son? <laughs> that kind of stuff, I don't have that ego. Um, I don't crush her dreams with like, uh, like forcing her to have a child. So if she doesn't accomplish her dreams, she can't put it on me. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't burden you at all with, with these like traditional things. She doesn't have to cook. She doesn't <laughs> like she doesn't. She doesn't have to be a breadwinner. She doesn't have to be a dreamer or uh, talented. Not saying that she's devoid of all these things, but like I, I gave her as much freedom, freedom to be who she yeah, is to being a married you know first world chick. You know uh, I've been I'm as cool as a cucumber, man, and. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I don't have enough uh, love, I guess, uh, for what I do for other people because I'm okay with sacrificing uh, a lot of things. But you've got to show me some light, like, somewhere. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. What's your network like now? I'm sorry? What's your network like now? Like, what's your who, who's your crew? Who you um, since, since that pizza love thing that yeah. got me off the floor, uh, I, I put everybody kind of everybody's there's a new like pole i have <laughs> like it's like five feet uh i am only interested in like cathartic moments i guess or whatever so i've been hitting concerts like crazy uh traveling as much as i can uh just rocking art um crushing beers eating burgers <laughs> you know just living in a moment saying yes to everything i can realistically say yes to as a you know working professional man and shit um i sit you know I am the guy that will show up at Applebee's on men's notice. I will be the guy that goes to a Pence game on men's whatever. Uh, I, I just say yes, because when you do lose people f through ghosting or death, um, I always make it a point to tell whoever's around me if we're more, if I'm mourning with anybody, I'm like, we have to live a little bit more for them now. Yep. Like, because what they would give to say, choose a couch over going out to a concert or whatever um you say yes to this shit and that's a whole another bag of cats with people's attitudes about living their life like you think you have tomorrow mm -hmm. like oh then i just thought you haven't lost enough yet then if you have that mindset where you can choose the couch over living your life you know and i have all the excuses everybody else does i work tomorrow i'm tired the couch is awesome my favorite show is on yeah. you know i just hate uh i got you know i don't have kids i understand that to a degree but work it out there's always a way but people just um especially in our age they kind of just settled in and i'm not there yet i've lost too many lives uh from ghosting or death to be lazy and not live for them mm -hmm. uh, i think we owe them and it's a very very frustrating thing where i do want to be spontaneous and live my life and i had to get these people peeled off their couches and their their comforts and stuff and i'm like i rock the couch too but when i hit it i know i earned it yeah. there's a difference between you just do that every day to where you earned it you know uh, and i'm a great time like i i embrace anybody that wants to come with me and we do bond and that's where i cut it off you know i, I do, do I'm very personable and I do care about their lives and everything, but I, uh, in my heart, I don't have them on this pedestal or this shelf where they're family. I to, I, that's one thing I had to stop with people. I'm not expecting family anymore. I don't have a best friend. Uh, I don't even want to use that word for anybody. Um, I, I did my best and they went, they went, I guess. <laughs> they, they, they get to be stuck where they're at. They didn't want to come with me. And, uh, you know, my success in life has definitely made people resent me uh, because it's threatening and shit to, to what they're used to they don't um, want to, sometimes people just don't want to see someone from where they're at win well or what, make a lot of money or get higher up I, who do they think they are type well well it, it's, yeah it's, you it's, were just born here like, yeah like what's what i all these thousands of people i talk to uh 
when I hit like the very, very successful people, like business owners and stuff like that, they all, they don't know they say the same thing. But they say, when you are successful, you will lose friends and family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chasing your dreams. And that's a really shitty, you don't want it to be that way. Yep. But like, oh shit, it, it really is. And honestly, people, you can see it in clicks and groups and where they go every week and stuff like that. They're totally, they need you to be at their level or lower. Mm -hmm. And that's where people's sweet spot is. But if you start seeing things they won't get to see or doing like bold things that they don't have the, the bravery to do, like it's threatening and they don't know if they can keep up. I don't know what goes on through their head where like I can't fuck them or I, I, I like I'm gone or whatever the hell. Like uh, I can't keep up. It's too threatening. It hurts my feelings because I'm not doing that. And all that kind of sh like it's a lot. And the sad you know? thing, the sad reality is if they just have the courage to sit at the table the table with people that are doing better than them they can learn and have it for themselves yeah. and envy's a bitch and it ruins a lot of things and ruin, ruins a lot of opportunities for people yeah like if you just take your envy or your jealousy and you learn from yeah. it use it you can, <laughs> use that energy that negative you can, energy yes yeah it's because uh, it's really really fresh and like by the way i'm not coming in here with like this crazy ego like look at me i'm like come with me yeah and guess what you still i can still learn from you and I am trying with you when I could choose anybody else. There's a reason why I picked you because I see something. I hope like you have it in you, but they want to be stubborn and right. Like they and they put their firmly in the sand. They just want to stay there. And I can't be right. That that's the biggest sin. Yeah. You know. Uh, even though all around me, I'm like I'm showing that I'm right in a lot of ways. You know, it, 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 on many levels. And it's it's threatening, I guess, man. I, I don't understand. I don't want to understand it either. I don't want to relate to how they think because they'll, you know, alter my shit. But all I can do is provide a path where, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm the first one, but you can come with me and we can make each other strong. That's the mentality I have. Not like I'm always has to be better or whatever. Because what the fuck do you think I did? I looked up to people that were better than me. Yep. And it is a thing. No one wants to admit like, no, we're at equal at all time. No, we're not. Does the does the salmon ever eat the eagle? No, there's there's just like it there is better and stronger out there and go find them and be a part of their life and by just being around them you're you're going to be more successful. Absolutely. You know, from their just mentality. Like show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You know, but there's it's just how that goes. You know? I did a um a breakfast with all of these women entrepreneurs we all just sat down started talking business and strategies and like in that past year having meetings with them um a couple of different places like my business grew twice is what i did the, the previous year just by you learning from other people and these are women that are running huge successful businesses like you you can always have room to learn and i think that we we're so afraid of being compared for other people's successes that we we shut it down and be like well no i don't want to hang out with them they're they, yeah they're above that well and people it, say never talk money or how much things cost i'm like nah, i do it that, that that's an insecurity thing that they need to work on like mm -hmm. i'll tell you how much i make or how much my booth was or how much that painting was or whatever i'll tell you and that's threatening threatening to you that's something you need to work on mm -hmm. uh and i understand the other thing because it like it upsets people i'm like that's an insecurity thing you know uh because they're going to compare your I, I know why but i like to challenge people you know uh, with, with that kind of stuff you know like why are you feeling that way so if i lose you to that then good you save me a lot of time but you could embrace it you know you can like, just hand out a book and it's called the origins of you and it talks about all those different wounds the attachment wound yeah, the insecurity yeah. wound the money yeah, wound yeah, yeah. and it's really interesting because like that is where people tend to not grow yeah from from those wounds and then you do lose friendships and you lose things um but i think it's good that you're asking people in your life to kind of to, to meet you where you meet you where you're meeting them yeah, yeah i don't think that's unreasonable at all i yeah. one of my favorite moments yours was uh whenever you did the reveal for uh kevin malone in the office yeah how was that did brian bumgarner yeah yeah he he commissioned me that's one of my celebrity is I, it I have yeah. on my phone yeah that, that's crazy shit we're like happening you yeah. know like these are things where like i come back home to people that kind of just stay there from whatever reason um and in my opinion they're better than that sorry but uh i'm sorry i have more faith in you than you do yourself 
but like there's one of those moments where in my in my heart like it just it, like in a video game i just got this xp thing like i gained and and it's it's great and i when you're chasing dreams and the, these little things that happen in your heart that no one knows but you yeah. and you are different you look at things different you're motivated differently you have an outlook that's more giving and uh it it happens with every little thing that you nail that you know that you accomplish and uh, someone that doesn't do that in their lives actively like these little wins you know that that's where they are stuck and they're frustrated and they can't relate to you and stuff and I'm like i'm sorry but that was my goal to change for the better mm -hmm. you know um and the, the, the celebrity thing when i nail something or it doesn't even matter if it's a garbage man or a celebrity like they embrace it the same way and i uh, I'm glad I didn't waste my time, you know. So, yeah, uh, we'll see what's in the future with that. So, okay. I think last question: What would you? What advice would you give to someone trying to start um, art at a young age? Maybe growing up in the kind of situation you did. Um, I, I find myself not relating to these kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm you so sound old. so old. I'm so old. <laughs> I like I I'm, I'm just gonna embrace it. I'm coming up on forty, man. Like, uh, I I've ran a gauntlet, a, a very unique life with art as an edge. Um, I would, you know, and I I come across all these young artists when they see these massive, impressive paintings. I guess, uh, and they ask me. First of all, they don't even know their paintings. They think they're posters. And yeah. I have to educate people what a painting is. <laughs> and, like, this whole, like, oh, why am I successful at Comic-Cons where I'm uh, I'm up against 700 other artists on average or something like that in some cases, and I still make a profit? Uh, it, it's because I'm the last of the Mohicans with traditional art. You know, uh, it's like Rite Aid and Walgreens right next to each other. It's the same damn thing. Like, when you do that, you're, you're not going to be successful. So when you go down Artist Alley and it's digital, 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 and pretty soon, AI, That's AI, right. AI. Yeah. Bring that up. That's so um, I tell every uh, person at Comic-Con to ask about my art and how do I begin or what do you do or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, don't go digital. I know, unless if you're a part of like a, a big corporation like Marvel, comic books, graphic design, yeah, you have to go that way because yeah. it's quick, boom, 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 doesn't matter. But if, if you're like in a more emotional artist, like selling originals and stuff like that, it, you cannot do it digitally uh, because that's, I don't know, man, there'll be a day where you don't see acrylic paintings, drawings, ink, watercolor, all that kind of stuff. It'll be just gone and there's no original art. Uh, there will always be, I'm, I'm being over top, but uh, from my experiences at Comic-Con, there's far too much plastic. There's fake tits. It's just, it's, I, I see nothing in it. It's not real. Uh, I want to see a flawed human being in, in the art. I want to see your imperfections. I want to see your stroke. I want to see you uh, in the process. When a computer gives you a perfect circle, perfect square, perfect gradients, perfect coloring, the lines for you, it does patterns of perfect fish scales or whatever, and you just, it's lazy, you didn't earn it, I don't see you in it, I see a computer, and there is no original. It's lost in cyberspace, and uh, that is the old fashioned romantic in me, and uh, I would vote uh, for every kid I know it's a losing battle because it's addictive it's pretty it's a screen it's easy you can cuddle up in a blanket like to go paint it's a real commitment to my time I'm going to go get dirty and have to stand and all this kind of shit um, you can't be lazy uh, essentially with that so uh, and you have to be mentally turned on to focus on painting too uh, so I tell everybody pick up a pencil crayons like start your kids out with the real shit Mm -hmm. Keep them on the real shit as much as possible. Keep them away from the iPad stuff because this is the real truth of like, if I showed up to the Moyers with a digital Leroy, I just had to drop into Photoshop, screw with it a little bit, make it look like an art, I printed it on a poster. It's not the same. No. It wouldn't have been the same. That's just, they'll never have that. And that's what like breaks my heart. They're never going to touch people with art that way. It's not going to happen. I don't give a shit how good it is, how technically good it is. That's the least, like I said at the beginning, that's the least important thing is the over the end image. Like there's no texture you know? to it. No like texture, nothing. Yeah. No flaws. Like you can see where I like, yeah, I see all my, that's the beauty of it. Like, fuck yeah, that's not good. That, like see it. 
you know, there's a bristle in there. You know, I, there's a there's a hair in there or whatever. Uh, I didn't shave things properly, the eyes a little off, whatever. Uh, it's th That's the good stuff. Like humans. Yeah. It's not perfect. Yeah. And uh, just be fearless and brave, man. Like, you only owe it to yourself. Like, <laughs> if, if I let one opinion, like, I didn't let one opinion slow me down, you know. And I got negativity from every person I can think of. That would be like if you saw on paper, well, oh, that one's obviously going to support you. No, like there's no people in this world that, way more than yes. And if you have yes in you like that, like they'll never stop either. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you? They wouldn't do it for you. Why would you go th drive that far? Why would you spend the money? Why would you invest the time? Why would you invest the heart? That won't sell. Why would you go to this city? That's too expensive. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I, if I listen to any of those, because those will just chip you away to, well, uh, now I'm Derek and I used to do art. <laughs> you know, uh, you know how many stories I have that? Oh, I had an uncle yeah. once, he's really good at art. And you know, oh, what happened with that? I don't know, he just, nothing. He just works at a coal mine now. Like, quite, he he yeah. gave up and I'm, I'm willing to bet he just had the strength of like, I don't know what it is, I can't explain what my drive overall, I guess. There's a lot of things I can think what motivates me but i really don't know but they obviously didn't have a structure of support and they gave up on a dream that they could have pursued you know uh the, and they could have got better at it if they looked at art and like well i'm not good enough to make a career out of this and then fuck it and it have like a negative wife or whatever and like yeah yeah it's stupid I'm coal mine now you know it's that easy for some people to it's totally, safety yeah people choose what's safe more than what they actually enjoy yeah. And I think that that's why a lot of people stay in that rut of negativity and never being happy because they don't ever do anything they actually enjoy. And it's A-OK -okay to have a shit, like, it's not like Derek the Angel with, you know, art. I have a really shitty side to it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not just one box. It's like, I, I don't believe it. anybody should be in a box. Like, be in, in many boxes, you know, just hop from one another. But, you know, I do this to prove people wrong. You know which could be a shitty outlook to have like i do do it to show off as well i do have somewhat of an ego somewhere mm -hmm. you know I, you have to you have to be cocky you have to feel sexy you have to be confident you have to be, have big balls you have to be brave and you do like if you do have a chip on your shoulder if it gets the work done do that too i have a chip i have a massive chip on my shoulder i'm like fuck you guys you know in the end in the end they'll see you know if i'm standing on top of the mountain alone fine i don't want it to be that way but i'm still I, on top of that <laughs> yeah I, I i made it very clear to everybody you're more than welcome to come with me if you just yeah. get over yourself and just embrace what i'm trying to do because i'm not doing evil shit with this you know it's art and like and and what i give i give right back i gave away 45 paintings free it's not like a, a brutal business it became a business organically I, there's no grand plan yeah of mine you know uh, if I can't make money publicly anymore, things are getting expensive. Things like it's looking kind of like, man, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Because it's so expensive, and I'll still do shit for free for people uh, mm -hmm. until the day I die. If I'm not even death of color to uh, the business mm -hmm. anymore, you know. So and that'll make me have a fulfilled life, and I guess that's what we're all searching for: is a fulfilled life where. You know, we're in bed at, in our last day, and we don't re have any regrets yep. and stuff. Um, that's what I'm shooting for. So living with purpose. Yeah. All well, right. Anything? No, like that's that? great. Great. Glad. To, uh, I'm glad you put the effort you do into stuff. Yeah, man. I'm trying. Yeah, you're it's, right. Yeah. I I love the challenge though. Like, you know, doing this. My business inherently involves human beings. Without human beings, I don't have a point. Yeah. Mm. You know. Uh, would you do anything if you know there's not humans there to support you and see what you're doing and stuff? I need them, but it's a double edged sword. Now I have to bring people into my life, <laughs> you know, and that's <laughs> it's so dangerous. But I, I'm, I'm okay with taking risks, man. I'm not afraid of the challenge to get hurt yet again, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's totally fine. I do love that, man. I do love the about the yin and yang, the 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 fucking peak of, of friendships, love or whatever. And the, the, the downfall it's, that's what life is, man. Like I, I don't think I would want it all just sunshine and rainbows. You need, you need, need that, like the rain and the dark times and shit. Cause I, I am kind of a darker painter. Like in my mindset, I do have like 
the, the sad shit that really fuels me. It's not just sunshine and rainbows and stuff. So, yeah, embrace the chaos. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> why not? You know, yeah. and, and all these anxieties and stuff like that. Spoiler alert, it's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. It's always fine. I've, from what I've been through in my life, it's always fine if you just, you know, have a good moral compass and you follow this before this. Um, and, and you do it anyway, despite whatever reward is coming or not. You just do it anyway. Because I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. Every time I put a canvas on a diesel, I see stars, man. Like, I see every possibility coming to me. And it's going to happen because I'm trying. And trying is the easiest part. Like, just try. Yeah. Why not? Go for it. Yeah. Th there'll be a lot of people that want to come back for one more day to try. Like, just try. You know. The story yeah. of resi resilience, resilience here. That's 100% right. it. All right. Well, thank you, Derek, yeah. for coming on. Oh, yeah. And telling your story. And if you guys have any questions, drop them in comments. And I think where, Derek will where, answer. Where can everybody find you at? At Death of Color. Uh, everything. At Death of Color. Instagram. Facebook. You can personally friend me. I, I don't give a shit. I, I accept everybody. I don't unfollow anybody for any political thing or like I I'm a I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just care about like I live it just in the moment. That's all I can do. That's that's all I can do. I I, I don't. I want everybody to enjoy the ride with me though. Like you're more than come come along. You want art from me. If I grow to love you, maybe you get art from me for free. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Pay for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he needs another cat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited for the future. Uh, it's it's not slowing down. It's good. And That's for good. you guys. Like, I can't wait. You know, I, I, I want everybody to be successful. Why not? There's exactly. plenty. There's plenty for everyone. There's no famine uh, anywhere. Uh, Scarcity mindset is yeah. not going to get you anywhere yeah. for sure. Yeah. Let's rock it together. All right, All right guys. It's easy. Love you, bye. Love you guys. Go outside.